call the meeting to order. Good evening and welcome to the October 26th issue of the meeting of the Zoning Board, Cape Elizabeth. First, I'd like to have a roll call starting from the right, if we could. Steve LaPlante. Jim Walsh. Len Galino. Mike Trenfalia. Jay Chapmas. Gib Mendelson. Joe Guglielmetti. We have full board member present, seven of seven. The first order of business is to approve the minutes of the September 30th meeting of those members who were present. Uh, any comments? I have some. Uh, page one, line 30. 20% should be 30%. Midway through the line. Change that to 30%. Line 38 has been applied for and assumed to be approved by the DEP since no response to the contrary was received within the time limits. That should be added to the end of line 38. You, you need me to repeat that? Jay, on that line 30, I think I think that it may be confusing you, but that, that is 20% uh, impervious surface coverage. That's what it was going for. That is not impervious, though. That's the increase in the volume. It's a 20% expansion of living space, which falls within the 20% lot coverage. I think that is point was that it's still within no more than I read that as an increase in the uh, not in the impervious ground cover but in the uh, which is referred to in the next sentence uh, but the increase in the in the volume is how I interpret that well currently the structure covers 16 percent a lot post no, not, I, right that's okay the, I, we should look at that number and make sure those two percentages are correct in line 30. yeah she, she can review it okay if we can review that. Yeah, good. You want to just to do it one or the other? Sorry? I'll verify what you say. So. Yeah, uh, verify those uh, two percentages in line 30, please. Uh, did you get the changes in line 38? If you could just do that one more time. The discussion was that since there was no response from the DEP within their time limits, by default, it was assumed approved by the DEP. They did not receive an, receive an affirmative written approval. They received no response within the time limit. Therefore, that's the, the way the DEP operates is if, if you don't hear a response to the contrary, it's assume approved. And that's, I just want that to be clear in line 38. Uh, backing up line 36, the shoreland zone those two words should be changed to the high water line. Line 45, at the end of that sentence, uh, average grade of the existing structure. You have that, please? At the end of line 45, of the existing structure. Page two, line four. Change bow to bay. Line 17, I believe that re refers to exterior sta stairs in reference to porches and decks, exterior. Line 23, tiling, that's roof tiling. You have that clarification, roof tiling. Line 37, before 38 feet, the A should be at. At 38 feet. Line 42, for clarification, if you change the word they're proposing, should be they are. Page 7. Line 14, uh, the fifth word in, strike the word if. Uh, 
And after line 41, I would like to insert a new paragraph that there are no, fur <clears throat> no further comments from the audience and the public discussion portion of the meeting was closed, to, or the meeting was closed to public discussion. <clears throat> Any other comments? On page four, uh, the spelling of my last name, line 12. Any other? May I hear a motion to approve the minutes please, of the four members that were present? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Four in favor, one opposed. Uh, there's no old business new business is to hear the request of Holly Reddy, hope I'm pronouncing that correct, one Rocky Point Lane tax map 14 lot 12 for variance to increase the floor area or volume expansion <clears throat> of 25 percent which is allowed in the resource protection buffer to 40 percent in accordance with section 19.5.2b and pursuant to section 19.4. Five A five. Ms. Reddy, would you please come to the podium and present your application? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you would just introduce yourself and describe your application. Okay, I'm Holly bill. Reedy. Live on, um, will live on, on Rocky Point Lane. And what's there now currently Hello. is. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I, I know it. <laughs> um, what I have now is a uh, cottage, summer cottage, uninsulated, um, just seasonal water, uh, no heat, and I want to make it into a year-round home. And in order to do that, I need closet space, I need to um, uh, put heat in and insulate it, and it's also, um, I forget what it's actually called, how the construction of a cottage is, it's the, um, you know, how they were done early. They weren't supposed to be made into year-round homes. Where is it? Seasonal? Yeah, they're seasonal. Okay, here it was. Um, they're with two by four studs, um, two on center, two by six joists with excessive spans, and two by six rafters, two inch on center with excessive spans. Anyway, when I had the builder come out, um, he said that, that, that in order to meet code, that all has to be redone. And um, so I, and I'd like to get as much space out of it as I can. It's a, it's a tiny house. It's the smallest one in the area. And, um, you know, I'd like to put a couple dormers on, which would give more room upstairs to, for a closet <laughs> or a headroom. Uh, and uh, need to put a furnace in and, you know, washer dry. It's just normal household things, it's not anything fancy. I do want to put on the front a little sun porch that would be added on, it would go out straight so it doesn't affect the um, wetlands at all. And it, uh, let me see what he's got down for it. Um, an eight by 12 and a half foot sunroom. So it meets the um, restrictions far as the wetlands and then on the other side it only goes as far as would meet the setback from my neighbor next door. So I should I mean that anyway that's that's what I want. <laughs> I want a house. And actually I think in the plans, if you look at the plans, it's basically the um, it's not the square footage, it's the volume that we're having, that's where we're getting the, um, that extra 15%. I think a lot is going to the volume. And that would go with the, um, 
I think I think my father said that the knee walls upstairs. So there were knee walls, you know, was higher, so there's a little bit more headroom. Uh, any questions of the board members? This is ready if I may. Um, um, the footprint's going to stay the same according to your application. Are you going to use the same foundation or just going to demolish? No, I, 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 the foundation has to be, it's, I think it needs to be replaced. So I'm thinking, I want to do it as inexpensively as I can. And um, and I've had the foundation guy come out too, and he's going to put in, he said he'd put in a new foundation, but everything's right in the footprint. Thank you. <clears throat> I just have one question. Um, mm -hmm. On your uh, application, you have kind of like a plot plan, and you have like a colored in, you have, I, I'm not sure there's no page number here, I can't refer to that. But the porch seems to be like a part of the front. Um, I'm not sure you can see this. Yeah, you mean the porch is? Yes, yeah, coming out. But then looking on the next page in the diagram of the, of the construction itself, I'm not clear as to where the porch is. It looks like it goes completely across the front. No, and actually, that's a doorway he has there. Um, let me just see if I can find it here. He has a. Um, He, he, do. he did it so that we can't put a roof over it because of the because of the um, volume. So I think that he has a just a post on the end. It's where the porch is now. He's made that into a um, like a place to enter the house. Doesn't it look like that? No, it's actually. <clears throat> Just, I guess one diagram doesn't agree with the other. As far as I can see, maybe I'm not interpreting. No, let me look at just, it. Just a question. It's, so maybe uh, clarify. No. Oh yeah, it looks from the side. Okay, from the side. Here. I'm just gonna show you. It's okay. Because it is hard. Really it's this one here, right? This one doesn't. Yeah, in fact, here. So you have that. You have the existing lot, and then you have the porch, right? This darker area is a porch. Or I'm not. No, 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 no. I think that's the. Eight and a half by 12. Oh, that's what he's adding on. That's where he wants to add on. That's what, is that what you meant? Yes, yes. And where's that reflected here? Oh, that's this. That's this. But, I'm sorry. but this goes all the way across. And this, no, no. No, it just. It goes right to here. It goes right to here. And he has a. Um, it goes to here. And then, yeah, he's got to take it. He goes to here and then it goes in with it and then all right so this is not really no does it and what, and what he okay. said no and what he said here is what he would do is um i think he had said he, he would he was trying to make it look pretty you know so we we're going to put something across the top but no right. that's, oh, sorry that's yeah that's okay i know what you i just want to see what i thought you were talking about something else I just had a question uh, with regard to the explanation of proposal and need for requested variance. Um, the, the first paragraph is say, to achieve my needs, I am appealing for an additional 15% increase in square footage and volume, along with the 25% increase, totaling a 40% increase in square footage and volume. I guess maybe you could help break that down. What is the 15% increase? <coughs> What's the 15 percent? Yeah. Well, maybe we, I, I'm trying to think with the 15. We just. Maybe you could help me, Bruce. The audience says that, that the applicant can expand yeah. up to 25 percent right. footprint. Right. And that footprint can be made up of square foot of volume as long as it doesn't exceed 25 percent. Right. The audience also allows the applicant to come to the Board of Appeals to get an additional 15 percent, but it, and it can be square footage of volume, but it can't be a footprint expansion. Right, so you can get 25 percent more footprint and a total of up to 40 percent more volume. Volume or square footage, yeah. meaning an upward, oh, but it can't right. be. So a second and is her expansion go to the full 40 percent? It doesn't appear to, it, to me. It, um, if it was just square footage, she wouldn't have an issue. It's because 
it's the volume that's kicking her over the 25%. Yeah. Okay. But it's less than the 40%, obviously. Correct. Well, it doesn't exceed the 40%. No. I think it is less than 40, but it doesn't mm -hmm. exceed. We know that. Could you, could you repeat that for me, Bruce, please? Which part? <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, testing me. <laughs> the volume versus volume versus volume versus square footage. Volume, 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 volume. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, um, I have a sort of a faded out uh, photocopy here. And I thought I heard you say that, it, that, that, that with respect to the square footage, uh, the, the, there's, there's no issue here. It's within the 25%. That's what, that's what I, yes. Okay, but, the, but, but it, it appears as if uh, she will be eight one hundredths of a I'm, again, I'm having trouble reading this. It looks like eight, eight one hundredths of a percent over 40 percent on volume. What page are you on? Which? I'm on oh, okay. what, what, is, what is called sheet number two. Oh, that's fine. Opposed. This one. Okay. Yeah, they're all, yours is, everybody's is like yours. They're faded. <laughs> I mean, yours is, they're. That's where all the calculations are. Well, that's what it says. I, I don't know if that says optional here, but it's on the calculator. Do you know what this yeah, means here? I don't know. My father did all these worksheets. Which one is it? It says eight. And it says optional. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's probably some. It, oh, it's the porch. I know what it was. It was if he put a top on the porch. So that this was an option? Yeah, and, and we don't have it on this plane. We just thought we wouldn't put it Okay, roof protection over front door, That's not enclosed. So That's what it is. It would put them over. If he put that little doorway, it's going to be beside the, the little... If you look over here, yeah. it says covered, yeah. covered front. That's if he covered it. And I said, well, just don't, we just won't cover okay, it. Okay, so, so that's sort of where I'm, where I'm trying to, to right. get here. Are you asking for something that would... No, would, just would my father did this... Would be an excess of no. a 40% increase in volume or not? No. No, no. I'm asking for the 15%. No, this is... My father's very elaborate with his plans. No. It's, so, so there is no issue before us, Bruce, then, with respect right. to... Volume or square footage, is that correct? There is no issue that that would put it over the 40 percent, no. Okay. I didn't catch the fact that, or I might have, but then because it was optional, I didn't enter it in my figures, but I reviewed the rest of the figures and they were fine. Yeah. In fact, um, I had a better copy to go by than this. No, so we're not. Uh, Ms. <clears throat> Ms. Reedy, is, is that the correct pronunciation, Reedy? Reedy's fine. Reedy, 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 whatever you want is fine. <laughs> my kids say it one way and my in-laws say it another way, so it's whatever. Which do you prefer? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> as long as you get Holly right. <laughs> you are here before us because of the critical wetland that's adjacent to your property. You have a uh, subsurface wastewater disposal uh, septic system in place that you had a delineation of that wetland in July of 2002. Uh, that wetland was defined by Al Frick, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And that was done as part of your uh, septic system replacement, not as part of this reconstruction. Is that correct? No, I'm trying to, my husband has handled all this okay. before, so I, I can't remember, I, I can't even remember when he came out. I thought it was, I thought it, I'm trying to think when he did, well, he had to come out anyway and do something for the septic system, and we had to put in the septic system. Now, I saw a number, of, I did a site walk of your property and saw blue ribbons tied out. Yeah. Are, are those recent or are those? And and I also saw a, a silk fence. Or were blue ribbons? That was that was all for the septic system. 
Okay, the blue ribbons are for the septic system also. That are the, the I think that's I think yeah. Okay. I think so. I don't think we've had anything done in the past year. And you, I think it's all I think it was all when we You have several pages of space and volume and square footage calculations. Who did those? My father. He's yes. he's a engineer and an architect. He's an engineer? Mm -hmm. If we can clarify Gibbs' question, just above Gibbs, where you said the optional 8.08 over on that page, the existing volume, and I just want to clarify it, is, is uh, 12.431 at 25%. For a total, the total would be 13,923 if they took, took advantage of all the volume. Mm -hmm. And without that covered front porch, they're at 13,654. So that they're under the 40%. I just wanted to clarify that because I know it sounded like I couldn't find it and I, I just found it. So I'm sorry to interrupt. On your application, uh, on the, the back of the application, you have typed in a very descriptive. Uh, discussion of, of answer of each one of these. You state <coughs> that, uh, in the second paragraph, the new wood structure will be built, built on new foundation. Right. And uh, with an additional 68 square foot sunroom added to the front elevation, then later on you describe it as an eight foot by 12 foot roughly with plus inches and, and you refer to a 101 square foot sunroom. Can you? Explain the discrepancy between 68 square foot that you have as an answer of the, when you were explaining the scope of the work and then later on it's an 8 by 12, where you always reference that, which is in excess of 96 or about 100 square feet. You know the discrepancy there? Yeah, I don't know the discrepancy. I know when he's been, he's done like, he's done a lot of plans for me and I wanted him to get as much, he likes things really pretty and cute. And I said, I want as much space as I can get in this sunroom. So he may have, you know, since we wrote up this, he he wrote all this up. He being your father. He, my father, yeah. He's the one that, that tried to, you know, write it up. And then I typed it. And um, so I'm so I don't. So. My understanding is that you are rebuilding the house in exactly the same footprint that it is uh -huh. with no enlargement of the existing foundation uh -huh. footprint. But on the front, you're adding out eight feet extension toward the street, 12 feet wide as a sunroom onto the front. Uh -huh. Is that sunroom gonna be interior heated surface or is that a seasonal type? Oh, I, th I think it should be um, heated interior. So it'll be as part of the yeah. permanent. Is there a second floor above the sunroom? No. Okay. And the figures were based on a 100 square foot sunroom. 100 square foot. The figures were, yeah, I don't know where the 6080 came from either, but. You know, maybe I, just, <coughs> maybe I didn't type it right up. But throughout, you reference an 8 by 12, which is roughly 9, it's 96. 8 by 12 and a half. Square feet, but then there are inches add on, which increases it to 100, to 101 square feet. So that 68 seems to be out of context with the. Well, it may, may have been my problem when I typed it up. I mean, not read as, right. Where is your father tonight? Where is he? <laughs> we, we're lucky he's not here. <laughs> he's, he's home. He wanted to come, but I said I could do it myself. And you do have a list of comparable properties of the neighborhood. Fifteen comparable properties and an and, and examination of, of the list. There are only two of those fifteen that... Uh, uh, do not support your uh, variance request. So it's clear that based on the neighborhood uh, volume me measurements, you do fall within in, in that. Uh, 
Who did the, who prepared this list? I did. You did? Uh, from the town hall. Okay. The square footage uh, from the town, okay. Uh, <coughs> put sets of homes. The assessor's guides have, have all these figures on it, so it makes it kind of easy for, you know, kind of nice for the applicant to be able to pull that from the property card <coughs> file. Any yes. other questions? Uh, Bruce, could I have a, a clarification from Bruce about the septic system? You talked about the seasonal nature of this property to start with, and the fact that that, that septic system was replaced, according to this anyway, it says 2002, whether that is in fact the case or not, it's not, we don't really yeah, realize. Yeah, that's when the septic system was in. Would that have been converted to an all year round use, rather than a seasonal? arrangement or was it replacing an existing seasonal disposal system? I don't think we had the, the cottage classified as a seasonal to begin with. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't think we have a master list. Since yeah. I've been here in seven years, I've never seen a list of seasonal to, to year round anyways. So um, it's kind of hard to, yeah. to uh, go anywhere without uh, that list. But in order to convert seasonal to all year round, there obviously that septic system has to, in fact, it is support. It is. It's a good septic system. We all did it. We did it with the, with the, because we were thinking of doing that. Yeah. Okay. Seasonal Which conversion. Question? Seasonal conversion usually only comes into play within within the 250 foot shoreland zone. Right. That's when it's crucial, and that's where they made the distinction and. And towns usually had a list of what was seasonal in night, whatever the critical yeah. year was. Yeah. And you could go from that list, and if somebody came in and wanted to convert, then they had to get a septic system designed that met year round use. Yeah. But for the lack of a, of a list to start with, it, it, it's almost impossible for me to track that. But, um, you know, I haven't got the septic system designed with me, but it's rest assured it would be, you know, before I issue a permit, the septic system will be reviewed to make sure it meets uh, the total number of bedrooms for year-round use. Yeah, okay. Good. Thank you. I Bruce, just, who, who received notice of the um, application? Anybody within, what is it, 1,000 feet? Or the nearest 25? The nearest 25 or 1,000 feet. So it's quite a, it's quite a number. So you feel sure that the septic that was installed was, was year-round height? And I, I apologize. I should have uh, you know, had the applicant either bring that a copy or I should have pulled it from the file and reviewed it. But, it did, um, uh, you know, it, it won't, the permit won't happen for year-round. And, and it's it, every, all the permits hinge on septic system if it's not on sewer anyways. Yeah. This isn't relevant to our discussion at all. It's, it's I think, of interest to me. Is there a distinction between a year-round septic system versus a seasonal? No. As far There's as a, the distinction between a use, seven months in a calendar right. year is seasonal. Yes, seven months is the issue. Yeah. Any old thing over seven is year-round. So, and I can't remember the magical date because I haven't had a deal with it since I was in, in Standish, but Seven months. Seven months is the determination Seven. on whether it's seasonal or all year round. <clears throat> um, lost my train of thought now. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Board member? Comment? Thank you, Ms. Reed. The septic system is, it is a really good one. You can do it on, based on that, but I know. Yeah. And the, you are, your new house will have two bedrooms, correct? Right. Your application. Yes, three currently. It's three current, and you'll be to two. Two, and two. From the audience, any comments in support? If if there are, will you please come to the podium, introduce yourself, name, and address, and. I'm neither in support nor opposing Polly's application, but I had some questions if I Okay, please. If you will. Introduce yourself and state your address, please. My name is Florence Braff. We received a notice because we, my husband and I, have bought Polly's property on the west side. We run all along where the wetland is. And I am, was concerned because it wasn't clear from the papers that Polly put in what impact this would have. 
And that's where I'm coming from. As I read the application, it seemed to suggest that the existing house would be removed, and I wasn't sure if this was true. Is that your intent? My intent is whatever is the least expensive. It, so excuse me, any comments that the audience and television doesn't pick up unless you're at the, the podium. So <coughs> if you would state your question, and then we'll ask Ms. Reedy to come up to the podium. And My question is whether the existing structure will be removed in its entirety. Is that her intent? If it will be? If it will be, you know, if she is basically proposing a demolition of the existing structure. Worst case scenario. Yes. The reason why I'm concerned um, is because of the impact on the wetland. When you look at the map, you will see that literally the moss comes up within five or six feet of the house, which makes it difficult for her. There's, oh, for those of you who've been at the site, and I guess somebody has been, um, there's open water right in front at certain times of the year. On the west side of the house, there's open water in a swamp. There's a swampy pond. The whole area is the critical wetland, as you know, but it's also an oasis of wildlife. And I was concerned because of this proposed demolition that the impact of the activity would be really a significant detrimental effect on wetland. And I had some questions around that. I hadn't prepared a statement, so I didn't expect to have to put everything together. No, that's, that's fine. We, okay. we, we appreciate your comments and your questions. And I am valid concerned part. about um, lighting from the house, because what is there is just a little sheltered area. And when one installs extended safety lighting outside, what, she, what the house could do is light up that whole it, um, impact. It's a little wildlife area, effectively. It's trafficked regularly by all the wild animals in the town. Um, the building itself, with the introduction of the new septic system, I know that there has been a drainage impact on the property adjoining on the other side. They've had increased water in the basement. The driveway has developed some sinkholes. So obviously, just putting in the leach field has impacted the way the drainage is working along that little section of the road. And it, it very significantly, of uh, Elaine Brassard is to be believed. She's, she's an error on the other side. It's hard to tell what the cause is, but it has all occurred since those two new leach fields were put in. Because you collaborated on that, I believe, right? Well, we each put our own, and they were done at the same time. Yes. And, but, but I'm concerned primarily because it sounds as though if there's significant upheaval, and a whole rebuilding of the house sounds like significant upheaval, this will upset the drainage into the wetland, and, and I, I wasn't sure who was looking after that. On the regulation, it looked as though there was a necessity to find that there was no unreasonable adverse aspect to the natural environment, and I was hoping that the board would look at that, because it's a fairly critical thing. The time when we had the flood, that swamp worked as a sponge for the whole area. We had water come up almost within 10 feet of our house, as we, where we were built, and so the swamp is really important for all the buildings around there. I was hoping that the activity would not contaminate it or spoil it with the runoff from the building or the demolition. If there is a demolition, I couldn't, make, I couldn't be sure reading the application what the contingencies were. I was hoping that the lighting in the new building would not destroy what is presently there, which is really a sheltered resource area. I, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare a statement. I was hoping that it would be a little more fluid. And when the discussion continues, if there's a question I have, may I ask it, Mr. Chairman? Sorry? If, as your discussion proceeds, if there are additional questions, may I ask them? Of course. We, would, we want to hear your comments, okay. and we appreciate Thank you, that. Sir. Now, which, which house are you? What is your address again? 69 Hannaford Cove Road. Okay. And where is that in relation um, to? When you, if you were to stand on Mrs. Reedy's front porch, we, are, we own the land immediately to her right, all along behind the Nielsen property, which is, I guess it's lot 11 on your map. Is that was a right away way to describe it? Yeah. We run along the back of lot 11, um, along the side of the applicant's property, and we face onto Hannaford Cove Road. As soon as you get onto Hannaford Cove Road, it's the first, it's kind of it's a, a cape. 69. But we run all along there, and there's swampland and wetland right in back of our house, all the way over to the Reedies, and we go all along through there. 
is... Our house is of the same type of construction, <coughs> two by fours, and it is difficult to insulate, but it can be done. This one. Is your house the house directly in front of, of... No, that's Paul Nielsen's house. We adjoin Paul Nielsen, but our land runs along the edge of his boundaries, which is along the edge of lot 11 on your map, and down alongside, I guess it's lot 12 is yeah. your lot. So do you yep. have a right of way coming into your property? Is that... Uh, that's very complicated. I never see, quite sorted that out. Right and if it's all wetland, it's kind of academic. Because it basically so is, house, there's standing yeah, water on there for a large was, part of the yes. year. Because, uh, she, it is effectively, a, you know, it's wet, so it's all very wet. Uh, so any kind of activity, joke, significant yes. activity on lot 12 will really impact the drainage, yeah. especially if, as is proposed, the whole foundation should be dug out. So if it's done, it's done. And um, some kind of play barriers, special drainage arrangements should perhaps go into place yeah. because it's really a very sensitive little area. Already there's an impact from the replacement of the septic systems. And that could, you know, it's easy enough to take a look and see what's happened to call Mrs. Brassard. Mm -hmm. Ms. Brassard. I'm just concerned because there's, there's a whole pool of wildlife back in there and it is a critical resource area. And I wasn't sure where it was being looked after. So you're, you are concerned about the impact on the, on on the wetland. wetland. You're yes. not objecting to the, to the, the, the plan, you're just concerned about the impact. If the of plan it. went through without any protections, I guess if I felt that that was going to happen, I would be standing as an objector because I really do feel that there have to be significant protections put in place to stop runoff, contamination, oil, a leaching, a lot of leaching of lime if they're mixing cement, any of those kind of things because I know it's a really sensitive area right there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ms. Reedy, would you care to comment, please? Come back to the podium if you have any comment. Well, I, I um, respect, you know, how she feels, which is, is very, it's, I feel the same way. I wouldn't want to hurt the wildlife either. Um, I have no intention of doing that. And I, when they came in and put the septic system in, they did, you saw the riffraff or whatever it is that they put along, where they put the um, septic tank, that was to protect the uh, life. So I said, I think usually it's that part of the deal that there is that type of a fencing off of the area. Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't want to hurt it either. And I think, I think for the crew wetland, isn't that even or further? Isn't that little wet spot where I don't think it's the critical. I think critical goes beyond that. So I don't think I'm disturbing that at all. He's disturbing the critical wetland. I, I believe that, that what I'm talking about. It's a ledge, basically ledge where um, the house sits, you know, on, on the front. So it's, I don't, I don't think, and as far as the lighting, I mean, I have to have lights if it's a year-round house. I don't intend to have lights shining into the woods because that's not where I'm parking. I'm coming in the other way. I mean, it, I mean, I, I don't see how you can limit someone from putting a light up when you, we're paying taxes on a property. I mean, I wouldn't want to disturb anything. I love the wildlife. I mean, I think it's great. You know, it's. I just... You are correct. There, there are two wetland definitions uh, shown on the site plan, and, and one is an RP2 wetland, which has, which is a, a, a lesser size and impact, and there is no setback. There is a critical wetland that does have a setback and a buffer, and that's the reason you are here. And right, and that's further back, I believe. That's correct. But it still encroaches upon uh, so your property. Right. And as far as the wet, when the septic systems were put in, I think if you talk to Elaine Broussard, my neighbor, she and her brother and sister, um, their concern was more with um, the people who put the the, the um, did the ex excavating um, as far as she's I don't think it's the rerouting of the water that I think if you speak to her I think she can clarify 
I know she has no opposition to what I'm doing. Um, and, it, and the drain, we do have a drain. That, there's a little waterway that comes between near our property and between the Nielsen's. And it has had a drain on it all these years, and the drain is plugged now, so it's been a lot of standing water with a wet summer anyway. A lot of standing water, which would, which will flow when it's cleaned out. I have to have that done, but it's been, it was a screen or something that was on it that's come off, so it's, it's been kind of plugged up. And, um, the people that had owned the house next to us, Mr. Chapman used to do it every year in the Brassard house. He used to, and we kept up with it. I assume that she was referring to when you face your house, the house to your neighbor to your right. Uh, is that who you're? That's yeah. Uh, were you aware of the <clears throat> issue that she described of, of water in, in that area? Yes, uh, yes, I am. And she was unhappy with the contractor. Uh, she feels that <coughs> she felt that um, I can't remember what what she had said, but she felt she felt that they didn't give her what she thought she was getting. And Who's contract? Her is her contract. Her, her oh. that, she, that she hired. She had some work. To put in her septic system. She also. Wanted, yeah, she did. They did one. It's not she. It's she and her brother and her sister and her father. It's a you know four people together. So, but she's the one that lives there. At about the same time you had your work done. We had them done. Yeah, very together. Very much the same time. And have you discussed your plans with her regarding mm -hmm. the? And yeah. okay, she obviously is not here, and so is not. No, well, we're actually work, trying to work on water together. We're trying to get to be around water down there. So um, she's very, and I can bring a note from her if, or she'll come up. She's. Okay. Thank you. That's a question. Are you are you on town water, or you have a well? I'm not on any. I'm on summer water. So I have to get year-round water, or put a well in it. And I've just come from a house with a well. I don't want a well. I want to have year-round water. Or Mr. Smith, um, do you have any reservations or concerns about the ability to do the demolition uh, and without impacting the wetlands issues that's been raised by the uh, butter? As, as is required with any, with any excavation adjacent to a wetland, um, proper roach control would be required and monitored by my office. And that's standard ABL practice. Sill fence or, or wood chips or combination would be required to be surrounded in the excavation site. And, and that's standard practice? Standard practice. No. And who, do, you know, do you have a contractor yet? Contractor for the demolition. Um, I'm probably will you skip Murray. All right, take it, Mr. Murray's. Mr. Murray's right on top of things when it comes <laughs> to erosion control. Yes, he's been to all the court classes and he's very, very versed. <laughs> are you putting in a, a basement, a full basement, or what are your plans? It'll be an unfinished basement. I'm sorry. An unfinished, yeah. There's one. There is one under there now. So it'll basically be the similar extent of what's there. Right, right. It's just it, it needs to be replaced. Any other question? If, if I may, um, you're not planning on adding any soil or taking any soil away from the property or any grading to the <coughs> plants? I, I think I'm lim limited to doing that. I mean, if I were, it would be on the wouldn't be anywhere near where the wetlands are. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mrs. Reedy, the, in one of your photos, you have, uh, it almost appears a daylight arrangement in, in the basement. Mm -hmm. Will you still have that same contour to the property, and will you be planning a daylight portion of that, or not? Mm -hmm. You are going to, okay. Thank you. Ms. Braff, do you have any 
other statements you said that you wanted the opportunity to re respond. Thank you, Michael. I had only one other question because obviously something has to do to bring water in. And I was thinking, how could that come in without um, also um, impacting the area in front? I know it's presently standing water, but there's regularly water there. There's a little stream or something, because all these wetlands are, are interconnected. If you've been it, it's like it's continuous wetland around your little island. And I was well, concerned it I was... Does, it does dry out in the summer. You know, for years and years, when Mr. Chapman... Was for the benefit of the audience, we need you to come up. Yeah, it does. It, it does. It was a very wet summer this year, and it did stay there all summer, and it did stand. But it has other summers um, dried out in that, that little, between us and the Nielsen's. So it, um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to hurt anything. I'm not trying to. I know that. I, I've lived there for 12 years, so it is. For the most part of the year, there's, there's water there. I was just concerned, thinking, what would be the impact of bringing in town water? And I imagine that can be done without any detriment. Is that correct, Mr. Smith? Customarily, public utilities uh, can cross wetlands. Uh, of course, they have to take proper so that's to protect it. But, um, custom, yeah, use, you know, that's something that has to happen, generally speaking. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You, you have public water supply to your... We have public water supply. It comes off... Hanover Cove Road. We don't have to deal and with I, that. I assume it extends down Rocky Point Road also. Uh, no, not so far as I know. Rocky oh, Point yes. is almost exclusively on wells. Okay. Um, the Brassards are on wells and uh, they have a well for the winter and town, temporary town water, city water in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so for the most part there is no city water down that road. So it, but it does extend down Hanover Cove. Oh yes, it comes right down so there should not be a problem. Okay. But that's not my problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Seeing no one else in the audience, we will close the board public comment portion of the meeting and open it up for a board discussion. Bruce, I think that that the concern is valid, and indeed that's why she is here for variance, is that it, due to her proximity of the uh, critical wetland and, right. and the buffer area that she is in. Uh, the, the contractor is a local contractor known to us and known uh, knows the ordinances and, and the requirements. Uh, what assurance can we have as a board and the audience have that the, the if construction is done, that the critical wetland will be carefully uh, uh, preserved and, and uh, observed as part of construction. Uh, well, if you if you look at it from a different way, what what could you do to to, to make that assurance uh, more? pronounced uh, I don't know that there is anything you can do it's just you have to put faith into the in the system and and uh, inform the applicant that it's approved but that that you know, take the proper measures to protect the wetland um, and then our office will assure that that happens I mean that's basically all you can do I mean you can put all the conditions you want but bottom line is you, you've had other situations of construction in this proximity to the wetland yes. before. Have you had any uh, negative impact from the construction that you can share with the board? There's, there's a lot of eyes up there, not only mine, but DEP, um, you know, there's eyes, the neighbors. We have, I have quite a few assistants um, to assure, you know, because there's a lot of people that are concerned and, and I can understand why they would be because resources our audience is really strong on, on protecting wetlands. And, I know it is. And that's why I take it somewhat serious because it is, it is quite a, it's quite a um, that's what the town wants to protect. Um, the, the reason the applicant is here before us this evening is because of the additional 15% above the 25% of the ordinance. It, am I, it, it's my understanding that 
if she was expanding only by 25 percent and doing a total demolition of the house, that there would there there'd be no appearance before the board. That's and true. Therefore, we wouldn't have any further comment. Right, on the and that, and therefore, the extra 15 percent isn't really excavation, anyways. It's upward, so it's correct. That's correct. So you would assume that same safeguards, either with or without a variance, is my point. Uh, the 25 percent, you would you would observe all the precautions for the wetland. Yes. Comments? Um, I've reviewed the application and with some detail. Um, it appears that the applicant is within the overall 40 percent maximum, if I understand the figures correctly. And I've also reviewed the uh, designs that are attached to the plan, which um, there's about three or four pages of them, it looks like here. And I must say that I think the design itself seems to be compatib very compatible with the overall aesthetics of the area. And also, based upon the uh, sample of abutters, I guess 15 abutters, this is uh, a structure that is substantially less um, in magnitude than um, the vast majority of the um, 15 or so, so um, um, abutters that they've provided us samples of. And also, based upon the comments of Mr. Smith, uh, while taking into account the, the neighbor's concerns about the wetlands, it appears that those concerns can be mitigated by the um, proper construction techniques that uh, apparently are known to the general contractors that might work on this pro property. So for all those reasons, it seems to me that this is a reasonable application, and I guess I would support it. I agree, and I, uh, the, I also think that the calculations uh, presented by uh, regarding the square foot and the volume and, and the uh, footprint are extensive and, and seem comprehensive and, and support your request. Uh, the ordinance does provide <coughs> that if the requirements are met that, that we can approve an application of this sort. I, and based on my experience and uh, with uh, construction in the town, and the contractor involved, I can assume that careful attention will be paid to the to the wetland in regard to construction. I think is a very valid comment, and we appreciate that. And I, I know Cape Elizabeth is very concerned about that uh, uh, impact <coughs> on wetland areas in general. Uh, any other comments? Let us move to the vote then on the uh, for the elements, please. Element number one, the proposed variance is not a substantial department from the intent of, of the ordinance. All those in favor? All in favor, seven in favor. Number two, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical, a literal enforcement of the audience would cause a practical difficulty. All those in favor? Seven in favor. Number three, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighbor, neighborhood. All those in favor? <clears throat> Seven in favor. Number four, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood, will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. All those in favor? Seven in favor, zero opposed. Number five, the actual difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. All those in favor? Seven in favor, zero opposed. Number six, no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. All those in favor? Seven in favor, zero opposed. Number seven, the granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. All those in favor? Seven in favor, zero opposed. 
and the property is not located in whole or in part within the shoreland area as described in Title 38, Section 435. All those in favor? Seven in favor, zero opposed. All elements were approved. May I have a motion, please? I make a motion that Helen Reedy, one Rocky Point. Holly. Holly, I'm sorry. <laughs> what did I say? Sorry. sorry. Ms. Reedy, run Rocky Point Lane tax map U14 lot 12 for variance to increase the floor area or volume expansion of 25% allowed in a resource protection buffer to 40% in accordance with section 19.5.2b and pursuant to section 19.4.5.a.5 for the building, enlargement and reconstruction of a structure and its foundation in a, um, within the setbacks of a critical wetland one. Motion is made. Second. And seconded. All those in favor? Who seconded? Jim? Variance is approved. Jim There's no other new business. Uh, communications, I'd like to <coughs> that we are nearing the end of the calendar year. Uh, according to the rules and regulations of the uh, zoning board, the chairman and the secretary, which is not a recording secretary, but in reality a vice chairman, uh, their terms are limited to one-year terms with re-election each year. Uh, we have two more meetings, and the reason I'm bringing this up at this time is that the next two meetings both fall, fall within uh, uh, holiday periods. The next meeting is uh, November the 20, 20, uh, 23rd? Yes. And Thanksgiving is on Thursday, two days later, and that whole week is a school vacation week. And we, if pending whether we do have any uh, uh, items on the agenda for that week, we may have to reschedule because of school vacation, pe people being out of town. Likewise, the December meeting is scheduled for um, December the 28th. Uh, Christmas falls on Saturday, December the 25th, so this is in the holiday period between Christmas and New Year's Day. So again, these next two meetings um, Typically, this is a light part of the year as far as applications, uh, variance application. Uh, we may not have any, uh, any applications before us, and if we do, we may have to alter that. So I'd like to bring it up at this time just for thought that I would like careful attention and thought to be made for applicants for chairman for the forthcoming calendar year as well as secretary. Um, I'd like thought to be given and, and discussion made regarding both of those and, uh, <clears throat> positions. And we will typically take that issue up at the December meeting, which is the last meeting of the year, of which the existing chairman's term and secretary's term expire. Any other comments? Items of discussion? Hearing none, I would like your motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All those in favor? 